All right, third graders, today you're going to need your math journal and a pencil. Yesterday we reviewed money. The learning target was I can count coins correctly. Today our learning target will again be counting coins correctly, but we will also add making correct change. Number one, you buy a carton of juice for 89 cents. Show two ways to pay for it with exact change. Use P to show for pennies, N to show for nickels, D to show for dimes, and Q to show for quarters. There are many ways to make 89 cents. I will do one with you. We'll show one way here and one way here. Let's see. I am going to use two quarters. That gets me to 25 50. Hmm. Let's do 60, a dime, 70, 80. Can I add another dime? No, that would get me to 90. So let's go 50, 60, 70, 80. Let's add a nickel. 85, 86, 87, 88, and 89. This is one way to show 89 cents. Please come up with another way to show 89 cents. Next set of directions. Write each of the following amounts in dollar and cents notation. You need to make sure you have a dollar sign, how many dollars, a decimal point, how many dimes, and how many pennies. This is called dollar and cents notation. Three dimes and one nickel gave them 35 cents. Notice they wrote it with the dollar and cents notation. If you would have wrote 35 cents like this, this is not in dollar and cents notation. We would say that is wrong. You want to write it like this. Write five dimes and seven pennies. If you don't know how to get this answer in your head, I always tell kids you can draw out the coins on your page to be able to count them. Here I drew out five dimes and I tallied seven pennies because I would count by ones. The pattern is tens to ones. So if I were going to do this one, I would just cross them out as I count. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, and 57. Remember, we are gonna use the dollar sign. There are zero dollars. There was 57 cents. Here's 14 dimes. Count out 14 dimes. Remember the pattern is counting by tens. Two quarters and four pennies. Draw them out if you need to on your paper and count them. Three dollars one nickel, three pennies. Let's look at this one. Three dollars. Here's my dollar sign. Here's my three dollars. Now let's count how much change I have. One nickel is five cents, six, seven, eight cents. All right, can I just put the eight here? No. How many dimes do I have? Zero, but I have eight cents. Make sure that you remember to put a zero here if you only have eight cents. Otherwise, it would change the answer to $3.80. Your place value matters. Number seven, seven dollars and eight dimes. Hmm, see if you can get that one. You are going to write 
the greater than, less than, and equal to sign in each one. I tell kids what you're going to do is you already know this one is 68 cents. Put a carrot on top and count the money. 25, 50, 75, a dollar. You're going to just real small write how much money is above each one. Now I know that a dollar is bigger than 68 cents. The alligator mouth is going to eat the dollar. You will do the same here. Count the money, put your answer up there. Count the money, put your answer up here. Okay, you will do that for all of these when you're comparing the money. Three quarters, how much money is that? Three dimes, which one is more? The alligator will eat more. 10 dimes, one dollar. 67 cents, seven dimes. Remember, draw them out if you need to. Right, and when you're done with this page, you will continue to go to your math boxes. Math boxes is on journal page 19. The math boxes today are pretty easy. What number is 10 more? Remember that only the tens place will be affected by going up by 10. Right here, here is the ages of nine teachers. One was 30, one was 24, 49, 50, 38, 44, 40, 35, 50, one. The median is the middle. I always sing the song, baby, why don't you just meet me in the median? That makes me remember what the middle is. I know, crazy, you'll learn real fast. Well, to find the middle, I need to put these numbers in order and then cross them out. So if I look up here, the first number that I see is the smallest is 24. Then we get 30. Hmm, then 38. Then, oh, I missed. There's a 35. Now 38. There's a 40. There's a 44. There's a 49, there's a 50, and a 51. I know it's a lot of work to figure those out. You are gonna write them. Then what you will do is, I just always double check that I get all the numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross off one from the low, one from the high, one from the low, high, low, high, low, high. And there we have the middle or the median. All right, the next one is a maximum. Maximum is the biggest number. So look at this set of data. Which one was your biggest number? Number three, write at least five names for the number one. Oh, that should be easy. Describe two events that are impossible. Impossible means they cannot happen. Mine might be, it's raining, purple Laffy Taffy. Even though I would love for that to happen, that is impossible. Hmm, you come up with two events that are impossible. Put these numbers in order from smallest to largest, smallest to largest. Complete the fact family answers here and draw in a unit. Thanks for following along.